Hello everyone, welcome to part three of our Moggy build. Uh, you all know who I am, but this man to my right. Sorry, I'm Tarek, I head up the design team here at Electra. We basically make what's in this man's head come to life. You may hear lots of background noise. We're in our workshop in the weekdays, so apologies uh, if you hear lots of effing and jeffing. But what's this video going to be about? And it's really to address uh, what we've done, because if you saw part two, you saw lots of building and <laughs> not really any talking. And that was because we had an incredibly short time scale mm -hmm. to get the truck to a show. I want to talk about what we've done and what we're going to do more importantly coming up in the future. So one of the biggest things, what have we just done, Tarek? Um, we got some Hutchinson split rims, which was a very steep learning curve of, I wanted these tires, they came on those rims. We took a weigh scale to go and weigh them when we went to go and buy them from a second-hand army surplus place, and they weighed like, what, 200 kilograms? 220 kilos each, yeah. Uh, naively, uh, didn't put two and two together that they had a rubber run-flat band in. So when the show uh, was about to happen, the tire fitters came, First of all, they said, you can't use these tires. They've got this run flat band in. We didn't let that stop us. So we went onto YouTube uh, and worked out that if you sit an engine crane over there, you can reach inside and pluck them out. We done that. And then it turned out they didn't fit onto the uh, solid rims that we had. So we didn't want to use these rims. So Tarek, what was the backup plan that we come up with? So we uh, machined out the centers, designed our own center for the middle, plasma cut it here and then it's been fully welded in. So we've set our own offset. We've converted a Hutchinson 10 stud to the Unimog 6 stud. Um, really happy, really big wheels. We're concerned on the axles. We've always been very concerned on the 404 axles. Clearly, they're gonna blow up into a million mm, pieces yeah. with the portals. But yeah, so the wheels are on, pretty wide stance. You may see when we walk around. Moving on from the wheels, what else did we do? Air suspension. Air so. suspension, yeah. So we're going to a full air suspension that will allow us to have around nine inches of travel, which is like a huge amount of articulation. Um, so keeping the, with the original Unimog feel. And then in the middle, we've got, um, well, we haven't got it yet, but we will have a cantilever uh, damper running in around here. So and we're trying to work out how we make the air. So why did we do air suspension? There was lots of reasons. Um, the first reason was we lost the torque tubes. So from losing the torque tubes, we wanted to make the suspension better and the handling better. So I wanted air suspension because this thing drove horrible. And uh, we had a few comments like, you've ruined it, you know. And I personally, clearly it's going to drive loads better with the electric motor. It's not going to go hundreds of miles, but I don't want to go hundreds of miles. But handling was the biggest thing. Yeah. So air suspension is going to give us loads of uh, flex. Uh, and with that, we need really big dampers. So the dampers are what, 13 inches? 13 inch travel. inches of travel, but they're like 40 inches they're in like length. They're like this so long. Yeah. Um, so we're looking at doing a cantilever. So that's in Tarek's uh, yeah. <laughs> job, job list for the coming uh, months. Yes. You saw the Tesla battery go in, and um, I saw a comment, and I, I actually commend the guy who pointed out exactly what we had worked out was from sitting the Tesla battery directly on the chassis rails, we actually kind of compromised exactly what the ethos of a Unimog is, and it's the twist and flex in the chassis. So the biggest thing that we've looked at that what we've done in a rush that we're not happy with was take the Tesla battery out and we're gonna put it in the bed, aren't we? Yeah. So one of the other things that we weren't happy with was the voltage of the Tesla battery. So the voltage of the Tesla battery is 350, 400 volts where our drive motor is more happy at around 600, 700 volts. So we're looking at changing the battery system. Do you want to talk about the four link Tarek that we built? Yeah, so the four link has been fully designed and custom made for this vehicle. And um, you know, when, when we were designing it, we went on the journey with Ben saying, look, how do you want the vehicle to perform? And you know, we've went through that exactly. Um, so we've got all the anti-squat angles and Everything that you could ever imagine, correct for the vehicle. Yeah, so there so is some science up. behind the four link. Um, we have lost some ground clearance, so we we recognise that the transfer box is sitting a bit low. We'll talk about that in a second, but yeah, we have lost a bit of the ground clearance. I personally I'm not going to be going crazy off road, and we may do. We may try. We'll see how it performs. But I think if we'd done a four link again, we'd probably set it up differently that we didn't lose 
so much ground clearance there. Yeah. Um, the transfer box, do you want to talk about that, Tarek, and the journey we went on to yeah. get the transfer so box? The transfer box itself has actually ended up from a Turkish manufacturer. Um, it was very difficult for one for us to find one that would be suitable to go with the motor because of the amount of torque it's got. So um, we've ended up with that. So it's a four, uh, four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive. You can go uh, PTO as well, and it's two-speed. So nearly a one-to-one -one ratio, which will give us a top speed of 60-odd, it was nearly, was 58. Yeah, around 60. And then a half ratio, split. Two wheel drive, selectable four wheel drive. Um, it's all air operated along with the diff lockers. So, yeah. That matched with the drive motor. I think you said wheel end is sort of like 50,000 newtons. Yeah, we, when you put in the reduction of the wheels, it's around 45, 50,000 newton meters, <laughs> which is why we're worried about the axles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what else have we done under there? So, one of the biggest things that we designed was the how to go from the when we'd done away with the torque tubes, it meant that we had to fit props, a normal yep. uh, standard prop shaft. So I'd seen what people had done before, where they had machined an end that mm -hmm. converted to the prop shaft, to the four stud. Um, and we weren't really happy with the design. Uh, some people took the axle off and machined the end and none of that. So we came up, well, I challenged Tarek to design a, a way that we could fit a system. So if you just come in close, you can see that we, we've done an A and a B face. And inside here, there is actually a big bearing that runs with uh, circlips. So it's all held in place. Uh, it's a bolt-on part. We had it machined out in China. Um, Very quickly. Tolerance fit, re a really, really over-engineered way to convert yeah. the axles to the prop shafts, but very nice, very nicely done. Um, Chassis-wise, I mean, Someone did say what's left of it being a Unimog, and I guess that's kind of a fair comment. The axles, the main yep. chassis rails, and the outside of the cab. Clearly, we cut all of the cab out. Um, moving on, we can talk about the inside. We may need to go around the other side, actually, but considering we took it completely apart and we live in the UK where it's right-hand drive, we went, well, we might as well just make it right-hand drive. So. Um, if you're familiar with a Unimog, they're incredibly cramped. You might be able to see um, six foot four, or it used to be, I may have shrunk, getting old. Um, so my biggest thing was place to, space to put your feet, space for a passenger to be comfortable, space for my little boy in the middle, and I think actually we could fit four of us in there at a squeeze. Um, unfortunately, because of the Tesla battery, I'm actually looking way out over the windscreen, and yeah. hopefully you're not gonna make me jump up. <laughs> not again. <laughs> Show it. Yeah. Um, you can see, I think we've even got cup holders to go in there. Um, yeah. We went with a digital dash, and that's because of our systems. You, we need the digital dash to be able to control all of our kit. Yeah. Motor. Mm -hmm. Tarek. So this is where the magic happens. <laughs> this is the inverter. Um, so all the DC will go in here, and then it's split, so they call it a six phase, but it's not actually six phase, it's three phases split into three. Uh, sorry, two on this motor. So this is the mid-side yeah, motor. So yeah. we've got uh, two, two and a half thousand newton meters of torque in there, and uh, 260 kilowatts peak. So that drive motor would typically go in one of our 12, 13 tonners and even yeah. our 16 ton platforms. This vehicle right now weighs two and a half ton. Maybe a bit more, because we haven't weighed it since we put the new wheels on. Um, there's not a lot of our kit in here. No. With us removing that Tesla battery, we will lose the inboard charger and power distribution unit. So we'll have to go over to one of our systems where we build the power distribution unit. Yep. In that, we'll have all of the pre-charged contactors and stuff. Yep. It means that we can run some of our heavy truck kit. So we can put a big compressor on here, uh, which means we can use it as a support vehicle. When the vehicles come to us in production, and um, they're very hard to get off the trailer, yeah. move them in the yard, because they have air systems, but nothing to, to power them as they come with yeah. our engines. So we can use this truck as a bit of a tow pig to, to tow things yeah. around. Uh, we can use our high voltage steering. So moving on to the steering, I'll just grab the light. So because we went over to right-hand drive, the steering box would typically have been obviously on this side, but it been a left-hand drive. We were trying to keep it as a 
an original steering box, but it turns out with such such an amount of articulation, we've had to go to hydro steer. Yep. So I picked up a double acting ram. We're just designing a conversion. I said, this this not go to loads of effort to have stuff machined and fabricated. So we're just we're going to do a bit of a mock up and see how it performs, see yep. if it steers right, and then we'll go to a full full scale design machined uh, arm. But ultimately, it's a tractor steering ram converted to the, the original Unimog the original tie rod. Unimog tie rod. Yes. Um, so we're just making up the brackets here to weld to the axle. Uh, and what actually runs that is the steering, which we can just go around to the other side. So this steering column come out of a an Johnson sweeper, sweeper yeah. an old little street sweeper. Uh, and what it's given us is a nice steering wheel with the fixed knob for yeah. a quick turning, um, and it's given us tilt and slide. Yeah, all the adjustability uh, you could ever all need. All the adjustability, um, we can do forward and reverse. We did put in a CAN bus pad because this MOG will have CAN bus, yeah. which is crazy for a 1960s MOG. Um, mentioned the seat will go lower, so with the battery going and going into the bed, it means the seat will go lower. It means my head won't be really high. But. Really, that's it's going to be a bit of moving backwards, unfortunately, Tarek, isn't it? Sometimes think, you've got to go back to go yeah, forward. Yeah, we learned, learned a lot on the way. And we had to build it in a really quick time scale. And now it's, we want to build it right, make sure it's going to perform, blow it up, probably build another uni market. <laughs> <Yeah>. Or two. <laughs>